What's happening everybody? It's Cowboy Chuck again. We are t continuing our Squad Basics educational series. Today we're going to continue our discussion on the invasion layers, understanding it, how to be successful at it, um, but then we're we are going to focus on it from an attacker's perspective. So last time we talked about from a defensive perspective as a defender. <clears throat> this time we are going to actually learn how to handle uh, invasion from a attacker's perspective, okay? So what we're gonna do, as always, go in, long, fire up your game, go into training mode, pick a faction, it doesn't really matter because all we're gonna do is we're gonna open up the console and say admin change layer, and we're gonna choose an invasion layer. <clears throat> so for this one, We'll just choose Al Basra Invasion 2. Um, typically, every map layer in or every map in the game has at least one invasion layer. Typically, there's at least two. For some maps, there's three. Now that the Australian faction has been introduced into the game, they've added an additional invasion layer that is Australian specific. All it is typically is a repeat of one of the other two layers. All right. So. <clears throat> couple key points to understand with regards to being an attacker on an invasion layer. <clears throat> Number one, you're at a huge ticket disadvantage because you are only going to spawn with 200 tickets. It's not letting me change over to the other faction because you know it's it's forcing me to stay on uh in on the defender side for now that's fine no big deal we can still talk conceptually about things that you can do from an attacking perspective <clears throat> all right so like i said number one you're at a huge ticket advantage disadvantage they start with depending upon the map anywhere from 800 to a thousand tickets as a defender so you as a as an attacker only get 200 tickets number two the opposing team gets forward spawns. So you can see on this particular layer, V2 Invasion, the first objective is Al Basra Airport. They get a Zeus AA truck, a transport techie, a machine gun techie, and three motorcycles. What does that mean for you? <clears throat> okay, this one, this, uh, this Zeus truck, the AA truck, holds four people. The transport holds an entire squad, nine people, okay? <clears throat> so that's, you know, in essence, 14 people. This machine gun techie will hold five or six. So that's another five, five or six people. So you're, now you're up to 20 and you got two on each bike. So you're gonna have anywhere from 20 to 25, 26 people that can get to the forward objective to defend it before you can get there. That's important to know because you're so you're already at a 25 ticket disadvantage from a numbers perspective because for you to kill them and wipe them off the point, you've got to kill 25 people just to make your way into the point. OK, you've also got three vehicles <clears throat> that have ticket values to them. So each of those are five. I believe the Zeus is uh, five tickets. Let me double check. Let me see here. Hang on. Let me scroll down. Yeah, it's five tickets. Okay. So from a ticket perspective, you've got 15 tickets there and then three of these. That's two a piece. So that's 21 and 25. That's 46 tickets that they basically have that they can get forward, right? Even if you one for one them and you take you wipe them out completely. If you won for one, you're now down to 154 tickets and you still haven't gotten into the objective. So you can see it's a huge ticket disadvantage. All right. <clears throat> the other thing is you have to understand as an attacking faction where their forward spawns are because if you hop in and you just start blindly rushing forward to the first objective, you don't know exactly what they have access to you've got to understand what vehicles they get you've got to understand where their forward spawns are and you've got to understand where their high-risk vehicles can present themselves so on this particular layer 
if we are the attacking faction, do we have access to helos? On this particular layer, you have a helo. So that's good from your team's perspective as attackers, right? Except for the fact that the enemy also has that Zeus AA truck. So at a forward spawn, that's a high risk vehicle for you, the attackers, because that means they can come over here with their Zeus vehicle. Remember, Al Basra is the first point. So all they have to do is they just need to come over here somewhere and sit like maybe down behind this depression right here or maybe sit like right here behind this depression right here with their vehicle and they can sit there with their AA truck and you can see <clears throat> they can see there's the airport right there they can shoot from here with their AA vehicle and take out a helo very easily so it's a high risk uh, a high risk vehicle that you as an attacker need to be aware of if you're not sure of what vehicles the the enemy gets at the start of your round just press enter on your map and click the little vehicle icon it'll show you every vehicle it'll be reversed obviously because we would be the attacking faction but it would show you hey they get the following vehicles at round start and then here's the vehicles that they also get that spawn on a delay or no respawn so once that armor techie is gone you don't have to worry about it anymore it's gone same thing with the brdm as soon as you kill it or you kill these three of these motorcycles they don't respawn or the transport truck once you kill it it's gone they can't get it back so understanding those types of nuances on the given map will help you play better all right <clears throat> If you're not sure about what vehicles spawn or what the midpoints are, where the forward spawns are for the enemy, how do you learn that information? Well, there's only two ways. Well, technically three. Number one, playing the maps. Map knowledge and experience over and over and over again. How do you do that? Go to an invasion-only server like Squad Ops. They have a 24-7 invasion layer. A couple other uh, groups in the squad server pool also have invasion only layers. All right, number two, <clears throat> watch somebody else playing the game. You have a friend of yours that streams or watch me play an invasion layer and just ask me the question or ask that streamer the question or just watch as they open the map up on your screen and you can see the gameplay and understand what's going on. And number three and probably the easiest and safest way <laughs> is going to your training range and doing exactly what I did here. Open up the admin console, admin change layer, pick a map that has invasion, select it, hit enter, and it changes you to that layer automatically. And you've got basically two hours to run around on the map and learn things. <clears throat> Keep in mind, because you are in a quote unquote live match, that if you drive into the water and blow up, you know, or run into water and blow up or fall off of something like, a, you know, fall off of the refinery tower over there or fall off of Moss, you're going to die and you're going to have a respawn timer. But this is a way that you can learn the map, understand what the spawn points are, understand where the objectives are, and figure out a game plan for how you would approach that particular layer if you were playing that game in real time. <clears throat> okay, so like I said, priorities, learning, learning the maps, learning the spawn points, learning the vehicle threats, understanding where the enemy can get to at round start before you even start your match. All right, next, what we're going to talk about here. Why is this bike creeping forward? It's going to creep me into the water and I'm going to die. <laughs> All right, you have to know what vehicles they get access to as it relates to the map because not all invasion layers are you facing insurgent or militia sometimes as attack as attackers sometimes you're not always facing insurgents or militia some layers the attacking faction is the is the insurgent faction for instance there's an anvil layer that one of the invasion layers for anvil where as the attacking faction you are the insurgent 
and the Russians are defending. So it's helpful to know that, you know, because that means if you're facing the Russian faction, you know they have access to a helo. That means they can get multiple squad leaders, drop a rally point or drop a radio down, place a team spawn, and they can have a whole bunch of people spawn forward right at round start. Something to think about. Also, with a helo, that gives them basically real-time access to the forward objective. There are no longer any real-time constraints. They can push as much of their team forward as possible uh, once their helo spawns. Most helos are delayed spawn you know, by three or four minutes, but it still gives them the ability to move logistical supplies and troops forward very quickly. So understand the faction that you're facing. That's why I was telling you, press enter on your map, click on the vehicle, you would see that, okay, if I was a defender, I know that they're gonna have access to a helo right away and there's no delayed spawn. <clears throat> All right, other things to think about, priorities. As an attacker, it's very important for you to do a couple things. Number one, and this is one thing that I prioritize whenever I squad lead on an invasion layer, I'm putting down a mortar fob immediately. As soon as I can get out of main base and get to a point where I have some form of cover without getting exposed to fire, I am dropping a mortar fob because I need to get rounds down range for both smoke and high explosives. So I'll have one tube dedicated to smoke, one tube dedicated to HE, and I will be firing rounds of smoke so that my team can push up, okay? Armor squads are critical. If your armor squads are not effective on their first engagement, it will likely lead to a long and painful round of invasion that you will likely lose. Number one, armor vehicles cost more tickets. Specifically, your IFVs, which are 10 tickets apiece, and then your tanks are 15 tickets apiece. All other vehicles as an attacker are five tickets apiece. So you can see at round start, <clears throat> let's use this map as an example. They get three logistics tr trucks and a transport. That's 20 tickets. They get one, two, three bulldogs. Well, excuse me. They get two bulldogs. Okay. So that's 10 more tickets. That's 30. You've got these warriors and a CTAS. That's 40. So now you're up to 70. You've got one tank, that's 15, so now you're up to 85. And then the helo, that's five, that's 90. That's 90 tickets. If the opposing team is really good at vehicle destruction, you could lose 90 tickets and never set one foot inside of the actual objective area. That's why vehicle squads are very critical and they have to be cautious and that's why you see them on maps like this you will literally see the attacking faction where all of the vehicles you know the tank and the warrior <clears throat> all the warriors are sitting back over here right and they're all engaging the targets at range here they're not sitting, they're not pushing the point directly. They're firing at range to try and provide cover fire and suppression so that you as an attacking faction have the ability to get to the point and set up a spawn to where the rest of the team can spawn in and attack. <clears throat> so my priority is setting up a mortar fob, getting smoke and HE splash down range onto the objective to cover, also to cover the advance of the team pushing in. Next objective, squad loadout. I want as many automatic riflemen slash machine gunners as possible. I prefer those over any other class. Um, Grenadier is also a second uh, priority because they have smoke rounds. So my ideal loadout as a squad would be a squad leader, one medic, both automatic riflemen, MG, grenadier, a combat engineer on our side, and then the rest riflemen, okay? <clears throat> Once you've taken the first or second objective, then if you want to switch somebody off to a marksman role or a lat role to start destroying vehicles, then that's fine, go for it. But the, the high profile 
armor, tanks, IFVs should be able to handle all vehicles. That's not an infantry job. Remember, this is invasion. You have to get bodies on the cap. So your priority is firepower, suppression, cover with the smokes, and getting into the point. <clears throat> Next, in order to attack Al Bazar Airport effectively, you've got to be able to get multiple spawn points down. Uh, that's just, if you have one FOB in play, you're likely not going to be very, very successful. So a common tactic I've seen is someone will put a FOB there. Well, hang on. Sorry. They'll drop, they usually drop the, they'll usually drop the FOB back here, right there. Yeah, there it is. They'll drop the FOB there, and then they'll rush up here, and they'll put another one here, right? So they at least have two spawn points to push in and then if they're really creative they can come over here and they can put another one here and get a spawn point here in this camp uh, this camp right there but the key is multiple spawn points rally points also and then as far as ticket discipline you've got to get a repair station up for the vehicles this early in the attack you may not need to get one right forward uh, right away, but you will need a vehicle repair station at some point because every time you send those vehicles back to main, once you capture the first or second objective on this layer, they're going to have to cross bridges, and that's going to bring mines and other threats into play, uh, hat kits that are hiding out at bridges and such like, and sappers that are going to be trying to IED and mine the bridges and take you out. <clears throat> so primary objective, mortars, bodies on point, armor with splash, uh, splash damage from their HE rounds and they destroy the vehicles. Once you get across the river, you should be focusing on getting a repair station down so that your armor doesn't have to cross back over the bridge, which means helo and logistics trucks running supplies constantly. Then the last thing that you want to uh, understand that is from a ticket perspective, if you don't take that first objective, it's game over because you're not going to bleed the enemy team out of tickets on the first objective. Um, you need to basically get at least halfway into the map to have a chance to bleed the enemy out because they're not going to have ticket discipline. Their mindset is bodies on cap, bodies on cap, bodies on cap, waves and waves and waves of enemies to prevent you from pushing forward. That's the guerrilla tactic design behind invasion rounds. You as an attacking faction have to understand those concepts and figure out ways to suppress the enemy and get your bodies on point. Um, second key point from a ticket discipline perspective is, is if you are downed, open your map and you see there's nobody anywhere near you, do not give up instantly. Wait, because I've had several rounds where I've gone down from being shot and I didn't see a medic anywhere near me. <clears throat> And then as I've gone to like maybe get something to drink or use the bathroom or whatever while waiting for my bleed out, I come back and somebody had pulled up in a vehicle and revived me. So you never know when you're going to get revived um, because everybody knows in this game tickets are critical from an invasion perspective and they are a premium. Ticket discipline is a must. That's why you always need a medic in your squad and you need the riflemen so that they can resupply the medic in the event that you are unable to get a team spawn slash hab down. You gotta have riflemen to resupply the medics and also to resupply the squad leader for their rally points. So hopefully you found this information useful. Um, take this information, apply it to the different maps. Like I said, use the training range change the layers to every other map that has an invasion layer and just learn where the spawn points are what the objectives are where can the enemy get to what vehicles do they have access to what vehicles do they have access to at the middle spawn <clears throat> do they have a helo you know are you facing a a reg, uh, a modern faction like a russian faction or you're facing an australian faction or something like that um, or even on the narva there's a narva round where it's russia attacking us what vehicles do they have access to what sort of firepower is a high risk at round start all these things come into play 
you learn them through repetition, learning by watching other people play, and also learning the simplest and safest way is using the training range, changing to the invasion layers, and changing sides. So every single time you change to a different invasion map, you'll switch from attacker to defender, attacker to defender. If you want to restart a match that you're on, say like you get spawned in on the uh, insurgent side and like this, it doesn't allow you to change, all you gotta do is say admin restart match. It'll restart the match and it'll flip you over to the other side and you'll be able to see information from the other perspective. So hopefully you found the information useful. Um, this was the second part of the invasion series focusing from the attacking perspective. And next time we will look at maybe something like insurgency or randomized advanced and secure. So this will just continue our series. Hopefully you enjoyed this. Again, name is Cowboy Chuck. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday on Twitch, usually starting around the 9.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Hopefully we'll see you in game next time. You guys enjoy your day. See you.